I'm Fernando Moya. I'm a neonatologist that practices in the neonatal intensive care unit in Wilmington, North Carolina. And in this clinical pearl, I'm here to talk to you about the importance of the cosahexaenoic acid, the HA, in some neonatal diseases besides you know, the critical nature of this DHA for brain and retinal development. DHA belongs to a family called N3, long-chain polyunsaturated fatty acids, which are mostly anti-inflammatory, as compared, for instance, with NC or omega-6 fatty acids, like arachidonic acid, that are primarily pro-inflammatory. The biggest source of DHA in the diet for preterm infants come from using mother's milk and colostrum. The HA is very abundant in mother's milk and colostrum, although it will vary depending on the maternal diet. Moreover, it's important to recognize that, at least in the U.S., we are unable to administer DHA intravenously as the intravenous source of fat that we currently use intralipid lacks the ability to administer any long-chain polyunsaturated fatty acid like DHA or arachidonic acid, ARA. This long-chain PUFAs have been studied primarily in their role in brain and retinal development and there's abundant data to suggest that they're important for the development of these two organs. However, there's recent data that suggests that they may have a major impact on the likelihood of developing neonatal lung disease. There's evidence accumulated recently from Robinson et al. in the Chicago area that has shown that the levels of DHA drop in preterm babies over the first several weeks after birth, especially if they receive primarily intralipid as are intravenous fat sources. Intralipid lacks any DHA or ARA. Also, data from Cami Martin's group in Boston has shown that not only these levels do drop after birth, but the levels of DHA drop further in infants who develop chronic lung disease. In addition, there's recent data too from what's called the DINO trial, a randomized controlled trial of supplementing DHA to mothers who were lactating preterm infants via the administration of tuna oil to enrich the DHA content on breast milk. In that study that recruited over 600 mothers and infants, babies weighing less than 1,250 grams that were in the group in which the mothers received the tuna oil supplement and therefore had a higher intake of DHA, had a lower risk for developing chronic lung disease compared to the other control group that received a supplement based in soybean oil that lacked the extra DHA. This and other experimental evidence in animals suggests that the likelihood of chronic lung disease may be affected by the addition of tocosahexaenoic acid to the diet. And this will become increasingly important as we learn how to best feed either via enteral or parenteral nutrition our high-risk preterm neonates. Thank you for watching this clinical pearl at pediatricnutritionce.org.